Have we found our successor to Mauricio Pochettino at the end of the season? Today, my friends, we discuss some massive stories that have broken over the past 24 hours involving transfer targets as well as manager replacement news. So I hope you guys enjoy today's video. Don't forget to watch yesterday's massive match review after we beat Spurs 2-0. And I'll be discussing all things Pochettino has had to say about his future in a video that I've released already. So big day of content. Hope you guys enjoy. Hit that like button and getting straight into the news. So let's discuss this morning's manager replacement news, courtesy of Christian Folk's report. And he reports that we see Hansi Flick as the strong candidate to replace Pochettino at the end of the season. Now, in terms of this article breakdown, we essentially get this. When Frank Lampard was sacked during his first time at the football club, we approached Hansi Flick to act as his replacement, but he was tied down to Bayern Munich. At that time though, if he wasn't tied to Bayern, he was very much interested in signing for us because he wants to test himself out in the Premier League. At the moment, Hansi Flick is targeting a top six job for next season after being released by the German FA and, and I think that was actually the first time the German national team have actually sacked a manager. I'll be discussing that later on. But to be honest, my friends, when it comes to getting more insight from the article, there really wasn't anything to sink your teeth in. Uh, we didn't get any reason as to why Hansi Flick is a strong candidate. But over the past few months, there have been these little rumours and these little leaks suggesting that the Hansi Flick is on the short list for manager replacements. If you guys Google it yourselves, there have been many articles and stories that's come out the past few months. Rumours suggest that there have been some strong internal conversations around Flick uh, behind the scenes. And actually, Hansi Flick has been spotted at Stamford Bridge numerous times over recent seasons. Now, I'd imagine that Hansi Flick could be the alternative we turn to based on financial reasons right obviously he's available on a free Pochettino already has one year left meaning that his uh, cost will be absolutely nothing and you're saving money by hiring another manager who's available already on a free contract still there are some interesting questions around this story uh, number one is a reset period necessarily the best thing for us now for next season obviously as we know the players are very much in support of Pochettino his ideas his methods and as Poch was speaking after last night's win against Spurs he feels like now he's starting to see small signs that the players are starting to get it they're starting to understand what's expected of them and essentially he would like to continue with the work he's doing this season on to next season but ultimately it's not up to him it's up to the directors and the management i guess the timing of this news isn't necessarily great after poch helped us secure a 2-0 win against his former club but it really does seem like his future is dependent on our league finish now come the season's end because if somehow we are able to get a european spot i would not be surprised if poch remains here but i feel like if we weren't able to secure that I see this as there's now pressure on Winston Lee and Paul Stewart because they're essentially in control of running our football club. They make the big decisions. And by failing to get European football, that looks bad on them because they hired the manager. They've bought the players. They've done all of this. So I'm not going to lie. I'm kind of being a bit cynical in terms of how I'm seeing the reasons behind how Pochettino could get sacked. But then I guess ultimately is Flick the best replacement. Now I'm going to tell you guys this. I'm not going to hold his time with the German national team against him. I do think that there's a big difference between managing a club week in, week out and then managing a national team. And I feel like with the constant changes in the lineup, formations, he was really overcomplicating what he wanted to do. I think Flick was missing the point because with international management, you must simplify things. You must have core, set, focused ideas and visions, building around certain players you want. And I think that's what Nagelsmann has already demonstrated at a very young age. I think it really speaks highly of Nagelsmann as a manager, to be honest with you. But Flick did the complete opposite. And we saw crazy experiments like Kai Havertz playing a left back, left wing back role. I'm not going to use that against him because I think he does his best work when he's actually with a squad every single week formulating ideas you know working with players and listen this guy's done phenomenally well during this time with Bayern Munich they played some great football and I remember all the hype and praise he was getting during the time Bayern on the treble I know sometimes in football you know we look at what happened yesterday that's the only thing that matters yesterday today and tomorrow Flick got Bayern playing some great possession heavy football 
which relied upon getting the balls into the wide areas really quickly, creating those overloads and putting those crosses inside the books. I do think that his football requires having probably a very experienced striker. I know that Lewandowski scored like 83 goals in 71 games working under Hansi Flick. And I guess they're the only small question marks I would have. Obviously, Flick worked with some incredible season stars and pros. And I think managing that type of player is a lot different compared to managing a team in its infancy that is still growing together, learning each other's games, that's still trying to build that cohesion. And naturally, he would have to adapt a bit. So I think we should temper a bit of those expectations in terms of what Flick was producing at Bayern Munich and thinking that he can just instantly make that happen at our football club and translate all that good work overnight. It don't work like that. So that's all I have to say at the moment. And obviously I have more thoughts and opinions once we get more tangible news around this story. But my friends, share your thoughts and opinions. Do you think Hansi Flick would be a good replacement for Pochettino? Or do you think it would be absolutely crazy now to consider sacking Poch and you let him have next season at least? And now we discuss one of last night's massive breaking stories surrounding our pursuits of Palmeiras Wonderkid, Estevão Willian. Now we have some big reports coming out from Brazil and normally when Brazilian reports are discussing us, they tend to be always right and obviously Romano gave us confirmation as well too. Essentially, we are preparing to send another proposal to Palmeiras. This bid would be around 30 million euros with 25 million on top in add-ons and this trumps our last offer of 20 million up front and then 20 million in add-ons. I guess it's no surprise that we are set to increase the offer. There have been some rumors coming out from Brazil that Palmeiras are even considering trying to entice Estevão Williams to sign a new contract. And obviously by doing that, not only is he earning more money, but it's increasing the release clause value as well too. Now his manager in Abel Ferreira came out last night to really praise Estevão William. No, he put in a match-winning performance against Botafogo. He scored the match-winning goal and he was just absolutely on fire. I think like 11 out of 15 dribbles. I think like at least 10 duels won. I mean, the guy is so good in both boxes. He is no slouch defensively. And as his manager was saying, don't sell this player. You know, his father, businessman, would be very sad if he left, but I want Estevão to remain here at least until 2027. I really think he's different from everything I've ever seen. He's a boy who defends, attacks. Talk about that. I ask you to talk about the positive things, which are many. He can be a reference for the future. All teams need this type of player because they do things. I'm not the one who teaches him how to dribble or shoot. He has that already. My job is to teach him how to position himself and defend. He knows he has that affection of everyone, from the management, from the owner. And he has a very well-structured family. His teammates play with him, despite being very young. You know that when he wears this shirt and the symbol, we have to treat everyone equally. So I think this is massive praise coming out from Ferran. The fact that he sees him as different, even though he has been working with Endrick, and even though Palmeiras are producing some of the best young South American talents in that region right now. Yeah, I don't think praise gets higher than this. Now, Romano came out afterwards to state that you know, no official proposal has been sent yet. But to be honest with you, the Brazilian reports already confirmed this before he gave his Romano seal of approval. Because obviously they categorically said that we are working to send a fixed proposal. Strong emphasis on working. They haven't received anything just yet. Anyway, it's no surprise that we have to act quickly because his contract expires in 2026 and he is now starting to assert himself as one of the premium talents coming out from Brazil. Personally, I think this is a guy we have to sign. He's a rare talent. And the reason why I say he's a rare talent isn't just because of the skills. It's about the temperament because you have to think to yourself, imagine when you're 15 years old, there's been all this hype around your name for a very long time. You know what it can get like in Brazil, yeah? And the fact that he's able to play his game with this confidence, but also demonstrate on the field mentally that he wants to affect the game. He wants to be a match winner. He wants to be the one who's the star for the team. That's a lot of pressure to handle at a very young age. And I've seen many a young player who have the skill and the talent, but not necessarily that top class level mentality to handle and perform under that type of scrutiny. Pochettino was even saying that some of the players were playing for us this season. That is still something they're learning in their game. And that's the type of mental pressure they have to improve upon for future seasons. But it's quite obvious that this guy is a natural talent. I mean, he's ridiculously explosive in the 
short distances, over long distances. Uh, his body balance is phenomenal. The ball is literally glued to his feet. And I guess it's no surprise that already he's mastered parts of the game like the step over because he can shift directions on the fly because not only does he have that balance, but he is good on either foot. Now, obviously, his left foot is the strongest, but don't sleep on this guy's right foot. He can shoot with his right foot. He can score goals with his right foot. And if he is already getting close to mastering having a left foot and a right foot, and he's just turned 17 years old. Honestly, the sky really is the limit for Estevar Willian. And honestly, this is the small window of opportunity to get a deal done. In the future, having Estevar and Payas playing together, I can imagine maybe Payas playing on the right hand side of a midfield three. You know, Estevar on the right hand side, cutting and having that freedom. It's the type of player that every top team needs. You know, we, we don't have that difference maker consistently on the ball. I think only Noni offers that right now. But if we can secure our future over like the next half a decade at least by having both Payas and Estevar together, I think that prepares us for any unforeseen futures and I hope we get this deal tied down as soon as possible. So my friends, share your thoughts and opinions. Are you excited by this news? Let us know below. And right now we end things by discussing a pretty annoying report courtesy of Fabrizio Romano and he reports that we have joined Newcastle in the race to sign free agent in Tosin Adebayo. Now he reveals that we've only asked for information on the centre-back in recent weeks in anticipation of his availability on a free at the end of the season. Now, obviously, that includes us being informed on his financial conditions, you know, how much money he wants, playing time, etc, etc. And you know what? Financially, you can just imagine that with our current boards, you know what they're plotting. You know, we can flip Jalaba, cash in, get that guaranteed profit, pure profit. And then we're signing Tosin Adebayo on a free. Someone who's a homegrown player. We have to oblige by the homegrown quotas. I think this is why I would not be surprised if we sign at least two English players in this next window. Hence why we keep seeing these links and reports around Pickford where, listen, ideally he's thinking maybe I need to leave Everton right now and I feel like I could battle it out alongside Petrovic for next season. But you guys know what I'm about to say. I mean, come on, come on. It's just like, Matson's dad was right. This priority of business over club values is ridiculous. And I just think to myself very cynically sometimes. I mean, when Celeste do it, they're like careerist guys who've just been hired by our boards. They have to obviously show results, right? And they're going to keep plotting and meddling unnecessarily more than they actually have to. And I just think that so much of our future is going to be in their hands when it comes to getting these decisions right. But what absolutely baffles me is that when you have guaranteed levels of consistent quality from squad players like Jalaba, and these guys are valuable, right? Because they have those intrinsic ties and values to our football club. I'm sorry, like, this is a human sport, it's a human game, it's not a video game, yeah? Managers know, you know, if you're introducing players from your academy setup, they play with a different hunger and energy. They've been ready for this moment. They understand what it means to play for our club. Look at Jalaba, he's been here since he was a kid. You know, his older brother Nathaniel was here. He grew up seeing winners with your Drogba's, your Terry's, your Lampard's. It's those types of intrinsic values that can't be dismissed. And they come out just like we saw in games like last night against Spurs. I mean, that was a phenomenal header. And this is a player in Jeva Jalaba where, irrespective of whether he's a first team player or not, every time he's given an opportunity to play, he is ready and he is prepared instantly. That's the type of quality that's the type of value that doesn't have any price in my opinion and they're the type of players you keep and listen the famous example i keep mentioning is nacho fernandez these players exist for a reason nacho is more than good enough to play with the stars at real madrid he is always prepared and ready to fight for the badge he has that quality too he's extremely versatile and i just keep thinking to myself we have our own version in jaliba he's not being linked with relegation clubs, he's being linked with European clubs like Bayern, like Dortmund, like AC Milan, like Inter Milan. It baffles me that we could dismiss this type of guaranteed quality to then take a gamble on someone that we don't necessarily need because, I don't know man, it, it gets a bit depressing for me sometimes. These intrinsic values are important man. You know, that, that loyalty, there's no risk in that squad integration. Like there is any time you sign a new player, what if he doesn't get along with his new teammates? You know, you're looking at 
the culture that these players grew up and understand. Yeah, it's uh, it's crazy. And listen, I'm not here to disrespect Tyson. He's also a very good defender. He is. He's technical. He's tall. He's strong. He's very good on the ball. I, I remember the FA Cup youth semi-finals and finals against that Man City team that had him in the team. Foden, Sanchez, and obviously our Reese James's, Shadows, Mounts, Hudson Adoys, and everyone absolutely battered these guys for fun here. Yeah. And I just think that, you know, this obsession of discarding what we have for finances, it isn't the right thing to do. I'm sorry. It's not the right move. And then I think to myself, what what was this obsession with constantly signing defenders? Yes, Thiago Silva's going, but where's the Fafana's coming back next season? And listen, I don't want to hear nothing about oh. But Wesley Fofana is an injury-prone player. This is how I know that our, us fans were so greedy and used to just buy, 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 buy mentality that we just don't have any value or respect for anything. The minute a player is out for a bit, oh, mentally people are already discarding them and looking towards the next guy to buy. I think th that mentality needs to calm down a bit because Rudigers have also suffered big injuries early on in their careers. Many players have and they come back. You know, Fofana isn't 31 years old or 32. He's like 23, yeah? He's literally coming back. He replaces Silva. And then you have Fofana. You have Coral, Badiashil, De Sassi, and Jeva Jalla. But that's five centre-backs. And then you can just add a guy from the academy whenever you have to turn towards using them for a sick choice. It just baffles me that we could waste money on a position that isn't needed. You're looking at Torsen, and then you're potentially looking at maybe another guy on top in like a Diomande or a Euro. It's these decisions that make me lose confidence in these sporting directors because it's just over meddling for the sake of it. And I think, again, I keep being cynical, but I think, is it just careerist stuff to make yourselves look good? Because you have guaranteed quality here, and when you have that, you don't let it go. You only let it go, you only let it go if you feel they're not good enough anymore. But I'm sorry, when great teams or even managers like Alex Ferguson with their Wes Browns and old Shays, they had their part. They play alongside the other established guys and that's how you form like a proper United squad. So honestly, spend this money on better positions, you idiots. I'm getting a bit, you know, I don't want to be doing another summer where we, we've signed seven or eight players and I'm just discussing all of this. I mean, I'm not trying to do this again for next season, but you have to be more focused now in the summer year. So my friends, that's all the latest big stories that's dropped. Share your thoughts and opinions and don't forget to catch the latest videos that I've dropped this past 24 hours. I'm EDFC, this is Blue Lions TV. I'll see you guys later with some more videos. Cool.